Okay, that right there is my son's self-portrait when he was in the kindergarten. <laughs> and I'm in his garage. And this is my hennaed hair. I hennaed it. That little swoop right there, it's not uh, red naturally. So yes, I actually did something about my hair myself. I hennaed it. And I go, hmm, it's been a while. I like. A lot of people don't like the red. I do. But blondes do have more fun. Men just love the blondes. But I'm a brunette. But then you can see the color of my hair actually is a rather dark color. It's a nothingness. But when I was born, I was a blondie. So my son was too. And now he's got a um, sandy brown colored hair. And once he looked like that, <laughs> so I'm hanging out. Uh, I was looking at this rabbit. So a rabbit actually is a worthy hunting attempt. Um, Orion, isn't he hunting rabbit? Because it's the most difficult game to catch. So there was a rabbit right up on the hill and it was just sitting there like a statue for the longest time. It was in complete freeze mode. Now freeze mode can be a tactic that you use with thought behind it, or it can be an instinctual response. But how about we go into the fun mode? <laughs> so the fun mode is when you've climbed your Mount Everest, you've descended, you're at base camp, now you rest. You rest. It's like you get down after all of that. The It's, it's going to be time to pick up the trash. And what you'll see in base camp one, or, or can't, either camp one or base camp, I think it's base camp. They actually do pick up all their trash and leave it. But nobody does that up on the summit because you don't, you don't have energy to be, you would die. So it's just like life. When you discover that you're the child of a narcissistic family and everything's answered and you understand, I'm the, I was the invisible child, you understand why nobody listened to you. You understand why you were poo-pooed. Everybody else was more important. You understand, oh, that's the family dynamic. I'm the youngest. I don't know what I'm talking about, do I? I'm just there to be a fan club for them. I was the fawner. It's fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. Quirky froze. I'm the fawner. Ken took flight and Jan fought. So we all had a predominant response in the dysfunctional family. But back to the point. <laughs> when I grew up, if you didn't get to the point fast enough, they were awful to you, the family dynamic. It was like, get straight to the point. That's what they wanted you to do all the time. Get to the point. Well, I'll get to it. You climb down off of Mount Everest, which is your realization of where you are, and then you can get through all the feelings. So go through all the hard feelings, meaning you got to descend back into the fun reality of, we're gonna pick up our trash, we're gonna throw it away, and we're gonna relax for a while. You don't always have to be climbing Mount Everest of a personal um, symbolic nature, nor do you constantly have to be going down through death-defying acts of jumping over crevasses and repelling down ice walls, <laughs> just like Mount Everest, you know? Sleeping out uh, in cold elements, in other words, having these raw feelings. Time to relax, go have some tea in the tea house. So I'm relaxing at my son's house while he is um, 
at the beach with a family and I'm sitting in these Adirondack chairs and just happened to be in the garage. <laughs> Right along with his sweet little picture when he was a um, kindergartner. And I enjoy being a grandmother. So I, um, I get to dog sit. I hang out with these fun dogs. Um, one's a Boston Terrier. And then the other one's Norman. And you have to have your own relationship with them. And if you build a relationship with animals. My brother does not know how to build relationships with dogs. He's missing out. But he's a guy and he has a lady. And um, I think if I had a relationship with a person, I wouldn't necessarily be able to have a relationship with a dog. Just like, okay. It's just like one-on-one. -on -one. When you hang out with one friend, you have a deeper connection with them than when you were to take your spouse with them or they had their spouse with them. Can you relate? Well, that's how it is with dogs. <laughs> you get to know a dog, but you, you get to know them better when you have a one-on-one -on -one with them and when you relate to just them. So I guess I'm learning how to do that too. And I think that's my takeaway from my Mount Everest experience of on this earth. Of um, There's going to be another Mount Everest experience, which is finishing my book. But this, this Mount Everest experience, I uh, got to the peak. I got to the summit. And I finally figured out why I had all these relationships that were so difficult with emotionally unavailable men who modeled my mother which is there is no conversation with them. They talk at you. And you're in the same room with them. And they don't see it as a conversation. When you voice your opinion, they, they look at that as an, an, an assault to them. So the rules of fair fighting don't apply to narcissists. Uh, I, I tried that. <laughs> so now I know. Like, you can't get a made-up mind to agree with you. You can't argue with insanity. You just don't. So you find the fun and the dysfunction. And so I'm sitting on, I'm resting on my laurels. I'm going to go back down to the Sherpa village. You know, some people fly out of base camp if they've got enough money and they don't want to hike back down to the Sherpa village. I want to take the whole thing in, man. I want to hike back down to the Sherpa village, Sherpa, and really get it. Really get to understand uh, the enjoyment of having climbed a mountain and lived. You know, not just take an helicopter or a... Oh, a helicopter, of course. It has to be a helicopter. To get lifted out of there into the airport or wherever to a hotel. I'm going down from base camp to the Sherpa village, folks. That's what we're going to do. So on this journey, this Mount Everest story comes to an end, meaning I, I, I know the discovery. I see the big picture. I'm from a dysfunctional family that is pathologically narcissistic run by a mother who has now got dementia so bad, her frontal cortex no longer works. So she can't be manipulative. She can't uh, remember what she said five minutes ago. <laughs> she can't stop and wonder what the neighbors will think. And she's just angry now. She's no longer um, friendly. <laughs> acting. Oh boy. So I'm having fun with it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the dog video. So yeah, this is a, a, a time to fun, have fun. Um, and we're going to travel together. So that you go, okay, it's okay to stop. 
okay to stop like that rabbit. Just stop, not out of fear. There's nothing to run from. There's nothing to be afraid of. You stop and you get your rabbit inks. You stop and get your bearings. Okay. So this was um, a fun little diary entry, a little vlog post. I'll stitch together to a movie later. Because we are seaming up, folks. We are seaming up our symbolic Mount Everest climb. And we're setting our sights on another summiting experience, but not just yet. We're going to enjoy the victory. Just like in racing, I take a victory lap. I'm going to enjoy this victory. Have you had a victory lately? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Peace out.